Hello there, you amazing viewers and subscribers, and welcome to the next episode in my re in my series of ranking every single season and series of Doctor Who from 1963 to 2022. And now we are in 20th place. Yes, we are in 20th place, which means we are basically in the top 20 seasons of Doctor Who out of all time. So, what is in the top 20? You probably wonder before we get to the top 10. So let's dive into it. So number 20. This season I physically enjoy quite a lot and it is of course season 18. It is Tom Baker's final season as the fourth Doctor. So what can I say about this season it was absolutely brilliant. Well here is the poster I made myself by using picture collage. I have to admit I do like using picture collage to make my own posters and stuff. And this is the poster I made for season 18. Season 18 was broadcast from the 30th of August 1980 to the 31st of March 1981, starring Tom Baker, Leona Ward, Lee J. Sun as K9, and of course Matthew Waterhouse as Adric, Sarah Sutton as Nissa, and of course Janet Fielding as Tegan. This season is just another whopper. I really do enjoy this season. We have a recurring villain at the end of the season. The rest of the season's kind of different. We've got a brand new showrunner, well, a new producer. We have the way how the episodes are my well, brand new storytelling, basically. And we have quite a few problems behind the scenes. Like with Tom and Lana, because they were in this relationship, you can tell in other bits they were really having this big, massive argument sometimes. Like in State of Decay, you can, if you watch the documentary to State of Decay and the Doctor and Romana's outside the times, as soon as they say cut, Tom walks off one way, Romana walks off, the, Leona Wood walks the other way. And another thing that Tom Baker did not like about this season, he had... He was literally coming to odds with the new producer, a.k.a. John Nathan Turner, the man that runs Doctor Who for the whole lot of the 1980s run, from 1980 to 1989. So, John Nathan Turner, basically, uh, taking over as producer, really had to get Tom Baker as the Doctor, instead of him trying to find a new Doctor. So, Tom in this one, while filming this season, you can tell Tom thought it was a good time for him to leave. Which is a bit disappointing. I would have loved to have an eighth season with him as the doctor, as the fourth doctor. But hey ho, this is Tom's final season. So we have seven great stories, which is the Leisure Hive, Maglas, Full Circle, State of Decay, Warriors Gate, The Keeper Trucking, and of course Legopolis, which is Tom Baker's final story. So what can I say about season eighteen? I really physically enjoy. Well, you're going to find out a bit later on. So I'm going to talk about the stories first. So the first story is of course the Leisure Hive, which is a bit of a boring story, but Still much got a few basically fantastic bits in it. Like with Brighton Beach, the Doctor getting k 9 sea defences wrong. So k 9 blows up when he goes into the sea. You go to Angolius. We have the, the Mavazi. And we have the heart. I can't remember the weird alien head things with, with the Christmas baubles. When they pop off, they die. Yeah, man, how can I say it? Leisure Hive, it's a good story, not a great one. But it's still got very much enjoyable. The only thing that really goes over my head is the te te technologics. The whole bit of the whole story is like, oh, we got the technologics. I can't say the flipping word properly. Sorry about that. Uh, the next one's, of course, Magloss, which is a shape shifting alien captures who basically shape shifts after getting hold of a human body. He shape shifts into the fourth doctor, trapping the doctor, Romana, and K9 inside a time loop, which basically they do find a way out. Not as much like the time that the third Doctor did to Axos when he trapped that in a moment's time. We keep repeating itself, you know, in the quantum time loop, John Pertwee says. But the fourth Doctor does basically escape with the with him and Romana both being time rules to both find a way out. And they go to Argalis to find out what's going on with the Madonna Helix. Unfortunately, Magnus does kidnap it because he wants to do his own sort of thing and the Doctor works out what he's doing and the Doctor does stop him and he does take the human back but this pirate, I have to say the best thing about this story, I have to admit it's one of the pirate characters, the one when he goes to Maglos goes, I want his coat, oh you can have the coat, ooh, and then the Doctor literally takes his off and he goes, two? Right. <coughs> Sorry. I really do enjoy the story, I really do enjoy Maglos more than the Ledger Hive. Now into the E Space trilogy with Full Circle, Warriors Gate, and State of Decay. So, Warriors uh, Full Circle is the introduction story to Adric, who basically in this season is one of my favourite companions. 
I don't feel the same as him in season 19, but I didn't really want him to die. Where in this season, he's actually enjoyable. I really do enjoy him in season 18 more than season 19. I don't know if that's because of Matthew Waterhouse or the way the scripts were written for Peter Davison. But I really enjoy him more with Tom than I do with Peter. I have to admit, we meet his brother Marsh. We have the Marshman. We've got the Marsh. We have the... We have Miss Four. Romana gets basically infected by a spider bite, which basically takes over her face as she becomes the queen of the Marshman. I really love the bit when the Doctor's there, watch them come out of the Marshman. When he makes contact, he goes, hello. And the one goes, oh, blah, 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 and he goes, that's strange. I'm normally quite fond of children, and they're normally quite fond of me. <laughs> I really do like the way Tom Baker does that. The rest of the story is brilliant. I love the way how Adric accidentally presses the takeoff button in the TARDIS console from the cave and the land on the Starliner. And when they go, what is it? He goes, good heavens, it's Romana. He goes, Romana, one comes out, then two comes out, and three comes out, and four comes out. And then the fifth one is Adric. He goes, Adric, where is Romana? She's back in the cave. What cave? Come on, get in there. And they go in, and the doctor goes, I'm not really quite good with these return trips, so please cross your fingers. And Adric goes like that. He goes, no, 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 like this, like this. Great then. <laughs> I really like the way the Doctor shows Adric how to proper cross his fingers. I really do enjoy Tom Baker's time as the Doctor. Tom Baker is just the best Doctor out of them all. And I really do enjoy Full Circle because he's absolutely hilarious in this story. State of Decay, the Doctor versus Vampires. Now, this story, it feels so much out of place in Season 18. It feels more like a Season 13 story instead of a Season 18 story because it's got... Vampires in it, it's very horrific, we've got very gruesome stuff going on. Like when the three vampires die at the end, after the Doctor basically shoots up the rock, their rocket, lets it burst back down and basically kills the great vampire. But this story is still very much enjoyable and I do like season 18. State of Decay is literally one of the best stories out of this season. <coughs> right then, we go to Warrior's Gate next. Warriors Gate, I have to admit, it's a fantastic story. Not a great one, to be honest with you. It's just fantastic. I can't say anything more than that because I do like the way it is told. I know the last a couple of like a year ago, I said it was one of my least favorite Tom Baker stories. This one's really grown on me quite a lot because I've recently watched it back early this year with the whole lot of season eighteen, and it's not really. As bad as I thought when I first watched it. And then it just kind of grown on me of this over the last year. Because I really do like the way Romana leaves to go and help this kind of lying creature thing. To go and rescue his own people. I do love the fact the Doctor gives her canine. I also love the fact the Doctor goes, I shall miss you. You are Romana of them all. Where Romana should be going back to Gallifrey because the Time Lords want her back. Which is why... They're on the way to Gallifrey at the end of Magloss and basically end up getting pulled into East Space. So Romana stays on in East Space. So the Doctor and Adric make it back into End Space. So for the only episode with the two of them just basically together is really fantastic and brilliant because you've got the Doctor in the Tyrus with Adric. And then, of course, when Adric goes, you don't have to. You, we go in there and we go, what? Go into Draken? Who said so? You set the quarters for him. You set them. No, but I didn't. Did I? I wonder what the law of possibility will have to say about that. And I really like the way how the keeper of Trarkin hijacks the TARDIS to bring the Doctor to Trarkin anyway to fight, try and tell him about this whole mystery with the with the mysterious statue known as the Malka, which basically the Malka is another TARDIS. So in this story, we come across another Renegade Time Lord, one we've already met before, aka the Master in his decaying form. And this is the Master's basically returns since 1976 in The Deadly Assassin in Season 14. I really do like Jeffrey Bivers' version of the Master more than Peter Pratt's version of the Master. Because the Master's basically trying to get hold of the Traken source so he can try and renew his regeneration cycle so we can actually have the power to regenerate again. Unfortunately, it does basically fail when the Adric and Nissa do interfere by messing around with the source. But leading to that, the Master does get his own back on this uh, technically because he takes over her father's body. So basically, Tremus dies and the Master takes over her body. Because in that epic scene where you kind of got the Master coming out of his TARDIS and going, So, a new body at last. And the way he morphs from the decaying form into a younger version of Tremus. But it's actually the Master, played by Anthony Ainley. 
it's absolutely fantastic stuff and i really do enjoy that story it's one of my favorite it's my favorite story out of the season so the final story is, is of course logopolis so what can i say about logopolis well it's very changing in the way of the storytelling because it's more feels more like depressing sort of way but it's still much enjoyable because it has tom baker's final line so starting it off with you are on earth and the masses basically landed inside a police box and basically killing a policeman so during that time the doctor and adrick are in the tardis and the doctor's there thinking about going to logopolis to get the tardis fixed so that way the tardis can actually like to get the whole chameleon circuit fixed so that way the tires can actually blend in with its atmospheres. So while doing all this, they go to Earth to measure a police box. The master's already done it, but the master's tires is actually disguised as a police box. So when the doctor goes in, they find out another tires has done it. Then they go into another tires done it, then another tires has done it. And then of course we kind of meet Tegan, who is on the way to the airport, Efo Airport, to become a extruder. Now, unfortunately. She ends up going to the police box after the car gets a flat tyre. So when her auntie Vanessa goes in to look for her, she meets the master, right? Instead of having any normal pit creature, like any, not anything normal, she would have gone, what are you doing here? But no, all you hear is the master's laughing. She's there going, no, no. And the master uses a tissue manipulator on her. And I really love the fact when the doctor comes out of the actual third TARDIS and then he sees the police going around the car and he goes, this is your sports car. No. He goes, we want you to come with us, sir. Why? So when he shows him, you've got a dead policeman, you've got Auntie Vanessa, they have been tissue manipulated. And then, of course, he goes, the doctor goes, so you did escape from truck. I really love the way that policeman goes, you need to come with us, sir, but you're still out about there, sir. He, sir. Yes. The master. And I really love the way how that ends there. And then, of course, Adric gets hold of the police bike, knocks the policeman over, so gets the fourth doctor in the tires. They take off. And of course, they're on their way to Logopolis and Tegan comes running in and she goes, I demand to see who was ever in charge of this ship. And the, the, the way that Andrew and the Doctor just look at each other like that, they just look like that. Absolutely epic and brilliant that, that, that is done. And then, of course, they go to Logopolis, they meet the Monitor, they walk around all the machines. Niss is there because the Watchers brought her there saying, I've, I've got a friend of the Doctor. I really do love this story. It's brilliant. Logopolis is brilliant. And of course, the master does fall off the radio telescope. Well, the master basically does. Well, the doctor basically does. So, uh, can't remember. <clears throat> what was I saying? That's it. Sorry. Yeah. So anyway, after the master's basically ruined the universe by destroying Logopolis, they end up going to Earth to, to the Faris Project. And of course, you have the epic chase scene between the doctor, the master and Tigo working together. You've got Adric and Nyssa. Basically running after the three of them. And then, of course, the master's there going to the doctor. I'm going to rule the universe. <laughs> the doctor basically stops him by pulling out the cable. But the doctor does actually end up falling for his death. With some epic epicness. Because when the doctor's just there, kind of like hanging. And you've got all these villains going. Like you've got Davros. You've got a Santaran. You've got Cybermen. And, of course, you have the pirate captain and... I believe we kind of had, yeah, the Black Guardian. I can't remember the first one we see. I really can't remember the first one. I think it's the Saigon. And then the fourth Doctor regenerates with his final line saying, it's the end and the moment has been prepared for. So that's a little bit of the stories. So season 18 as a whole, it's different from when Graham Williams and, of course, Philip Changecliffe was running the show. But it becomes more of a fantastic kind of season it's still brilliant it's one of my favorite seasons for tom baker i mean we've got i got five in this top 20 so, and then when you get to the other ones you probably know how high they are so let me know in the comments what do you think of season 18 is it one of your favorite stories or seasons let me know in the comments please do like subscribe share and join for more awesome doctor who content